Hey everybody, welcome back once again. And today we're gonna jump right into HTML5. And this is probably less of a tutorial and more of a demonstration, but I wanna show you, uh, you know, why are we making this move to HTML5 and what are some of the capabilities that HTML5 can do for you. And so uh, what we're looking at right here is this is uh, actually a web page on Apple's site. And uh, this is uh, basically, essentially, their commitment to HTML5 and web standards. Now, Apple is by no means alone in this. Um, there are many companies, Microsoft, etc., that are committed uh, to moving forward with HTML5 and web standards. Uh, Apple's one of the companies that's leading the game a little bit, and you know their browser Safari is built on WebKit, which uh, which is you know a little more, a little further along than some other other um, other environments. But anyway, um, so I'm not trying to you know say that Apple is exclusive to this, but uh, they do have a really nice page with some demos that show you what can be done with this. And if you want to visit this page, and I suggest you do, and you just kind of mess around in here, it's apple.com slash HTML5. Pretty easy to remember. And uh, essentially what they're saying in here is every new Apple mobile device and every new Mac, along with the latest version of Apple Safari web browser, supports web standards including HTML5, CSS3, and JavaScript. So this is kind of the trifecta here of technologies that we're going to be using uh, moving forward into the future. HTML5, uh, obviously the, the kind of the bones, the structure the framework um, in HTML that everything hinges upon. Uh, CSS3, which involves uh, you know quite a lot of improvements over the last version of CSS. Um, and CSS, as you know, is for styling, um, layout, uh, you know, things like that. And uh, it actually is starting to support natively some transitions. And uh, we're going to jump into that when we get into further tutorials here. And then finally, JavaScript, which uh, is essentially, you know, with all this stuff, there are times where you need a scripting language. And JavaScript uh, certainly does a wonderful job at that. And we're going to, in future episodes, be working on all three areas of this trifecta of web design here. Uh, anyway, uh, but, you know, one of the things here, that if you scroll down, there's the HTML5 showcase. And I'll show you some of these things. Now, one one of the, um, you know, in the last couple of years, you know, the the uh, keys to developing interactivity on the web has been the use of Macromedia's Flash and now Adobe's Flash. Adobe bought it from Macromedia. And Flash, God bless it, uh, is great as it is. And I used to be heavily into Flash. I never thought I would not be. Uh, but it's always been a browser plug-in. And with that comes problems. It requires its own set of updates independent of the browser. Um, you require users to have that plug-in. And believe it or not, there are uh, businesses is that uh, for IT reasons do not allow users to install Flash on their computers. So, you know, there's a chunk of people out there that are missing uh, some of the interactive elements of the web. Uh, anyway, they've got some elements in here. If you click on this video one, and this is uh, a really big deal because now, um, as you can see, this video is playing right here in the browser. Uh, HTML5, this no JavaScript CSS involved, will natively play video. And uh, this this is a big deal. I'm going to turn the volume down here. We've got the little preview to Tron here. And the other thing is it has some interactivity elements too. So you can scale the video. So if I want to bring it down like so. And uh, it's kind of hard to tell from this tutorial, but when I stop scaling it kind of eases in which is really nice uh, the other thing is I can mask it I can turn a mask on and so it's masked out underneath the logo uh, the video is playing underneath this used to be only possible using flash uh, let's turn that off you can also put it in a perspective so you can turn it slightly and the video will scale accordingly and you have controls for pausing the video rewinding and fast forwarding so this is really big leap um, and uh, you know uh, one of the really cool things about you know not having the Flash player involved. The other thing is because Flash is a plugin, it uses a little more system resources, and and uh, this hasn't been as big an issue on Windows as it has been on uh, on the Mac side. But on the Mac side, that really starts chugging your performance down and really um, bleeds a lot. And using HTML5 for video, um, you know, negates that a little bit. Anyway, uh, here's some typography stuff that you can do now. Um, this is all dynamic. Uh, it deals with scalable vector graphics. Etc. I can change the font, I can change the size, the color. Uh, we can add a drop shadow onto the bottom. This is all just native. This is uh, HTML5, CSS, this is uh, in some JavaScript. There's no flash involved. Transparency, all these things used to not be in rotation. These used to never be. Um, uh, and I can still select the text, which is amazing. Uh, this used to not be native to HTML. So anyway, and there's some other uh, examples in here that are pretty cool too. Like for instance, this demo, there's no interactive elements, but there are no graphics used in this demo. This is all using vector graphics within CSS3 and HTML5. So very, very, very cool stuff. Um, so anyway, some stuff you can do, some masking, stuff like that. 
uh, web galleries. Um, I'm just gonna audio works a lot like video does, where you can you can play an audio file um, and embed it into your document directly, and you don't require a plugin to play it. Uh, transitions. This one's pretty interesting too. If you go to the transitions page, these are built-in transitions into uh, CSS. There's 2D transitions, so I can dissolve, uh, I can toss, slide in. Uh, iris, which is kind of cool, and fade through. So these could be very, um, uh, you know, uh, beneficial if you're designing a lot of web galleries, things like that. There's some 3D transitions like cubes and rotations. Uh, there's a horizontal flip. This one's interesting, the multi-flip, where it splits up the image. And then finally, there's an unfold. And uh, we're going to get into this uh, as well. Um, anyway, so I would definitely check this page out. Uh, the other thing, too, QuickTime VR stuff. If I go into 360 view, this used to, uh, well, you can do it in Flash, but it used to rely heavily on the QuickTime VR plugin or QuickTime plugin. But I can click and drag this 3D image and uh, spin it. And rotate the other way too so and it'll also do uh, 360 environmental stuff too so it's very very cool stuff and uh, once again just apple.com slash html5 and you can dig around there's also a developer page here so you can you know learn more and and uh, download tutorials of how to do these things and incorporate them into your own projects and uh, we're going to go on to uh, getting straight into html5 in our next episode here so anyway this has just kind of been an overview but uh, thanks again for watching we'll see you in the next one